It's Wednesday on Melrose Mountain at Higher Ground, and we're looking at Mark chapter 14. Now, Jesus has gathered together with his disciples. They're uh, in Jerusalem in an upper room, and they're prepared for the feast of the Passover. And uh, the Passover is a significant event in the life of Israel. It's when they were delivered from Egypt and out of bondage. And now Jesus was about to bring it into clear focus because it, it was just a shadowy picture of what was yet to come. He was going to become the Lamb of God who took away the sins of many. And so as he comes together with his disciples, he breaks the bread and he says, this is my body, which is given for many, given for you, given for me, for all that would believe. And his body was broken. And he was whipped. He was mocked. He was spit upon. He was hit. And then he was crucified. Nails were driven in his hands and his feet. And his body was broken for us. Now, he didn't mean that that bread would literally turn into his body. It was a figure of speech. It, it was uh, symbolic of his body. And then he says in verse 24, this is my blood poured out for many. You see, not all will really, will really believe in him and receive him. Uh, but for many, it would be, as it says in the parallel passage in Matthew 26, verse 26, it would be for the forgiveness of sins. Now, it wasn't again his blood. Remember, the Jew was very violently opposed to touching blood or being around blood. So he wasn't uh, saying this is literally my blood, but it's symbolic of his blood, which was shed for us on the cross of Calvary. And then he made a very incredible statement. He said he would never drink again of that juice of the grape until he did it anew in the Father's kingdom. Uh, I imagine it was quite a reunion time when the disciples died and joined him in heaven. And they sat around the table, not celebrating the Passover, but celebrating the Lord's Supper, celebrating the death and resurrection that provided a way of salvation for all of us. And he will take it again anew with us in heaven. Now, I remember years ago, Peter Lord in a church in Titusville, Florida, uh, asked two questions. He said, what is the Old Testament and what is the New Testament? And Jeremiah answers that question. Jeremiah says in 3131 that the Old Testament was the one that the people of Israel broke because it was a conditional covenant. God said, if you will do such and such, I will do such and such. And they broke that covenant. Covenant means contract. They broke the contract, the conditional contract. But now Jesus would make an unconditional contract. He said, I will. I will die for your sins. Now, the only condition upon that is belief and receiving. That's the only condition. And it can't be broken once you believe and receive. It is an unbreakable contract, irrevocable. Jeremiah said it this way. He said, I'll put my laws on their hearts. And that's what happens, isn't it, when we become Christians? We want to keep the rules and regulations he sets down for us because they're written on our heart. They're in us as what we know is right to do. And that's why we keep the contract. And that's why he keeps the contract. Because there's no longer condition on sacrifice of the Old Testament, but upon the sacrifice of the New Testament, Jesus' blood shed for us. And one day, when our time comes to leave this earth, we will be able to have the Lord's Supper with the Lord himself. Now, the other thing that I've always noticed in churches is there's a great deal of controversy and argument about how often you should do the Lord's Supper. Some churches believe that you should do it every time you meet. 
Some churches say just on Sunday. Some churches say it should be done monthly. Some say quarterly. And, and yet the Passover itself was a once a year activity. Now, that doesn't mean we have to do the Lord's Supper once a year because Jesus himself said, as often as you do this, however often you want to. If you're a church that wants to do it every service, that's your prerogative. If you want to do it once a quarter, that's your prerogative. If you want to do it as the Spirit leads, that's your prerogative. But he said, as often as you do it, don't do it in route. Don't do it by ritual. Don't do it as a, a, a symbol of, uh, of going through the motions. But do it in remembrance of him. His body broken for us. His blood shed for us. That we might find forgiveness of sins. It's all found right there in the text. Chapter 14, verses 22 through 25. Parallel passages, Matthew 26, verse 26. And Luke 22, verse 14. Do it in remembrance of him. Next time you come to the Lord's table. Now, however, however often your church does it. Remember, you're doing it in remembrance of him and what he did for you. He gave thanks and he offered a blessing when he took the elements. And so should we. That's your thought for the day. God bless you.